Spoiler alert. Saunders is junk. 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 Now, these are my own personal opinions, and I'm not paid or sponsored by any of these companies for this product review. That said, let's get into this review. So this is actually a direct comparison of the Saunders 7, which I paid $1,152 for. Going up against this bike is the Rad Rover from Rad Power Bikes. Uh, this bike I paid $1,499 shipped. And I feel like this is a great comparison because they're both fat tire bikes. They're in the same price range. So let's go over some of the specs first off about each bike. And the Saunders 7 here actually features a 350 watt Bafang hub motor, Shimano Turney seven speed gear set, Tektro 160 millimeter brakes, a 36 volt 12.8 amp hour battery, which is an upgraded option, along with the suspension forks and the LCD display. And then we have the Rad Rover, which features a 750 watt Bafang hub motor, Shimano Asira seven speed gear set, Tektro 180 millimeter brakes, a 48 volt 11.7 amp hour battery, which is standard, as well as the suspension forks and the LCD display. Next up, build quality. Now we'll start off here with the Saunders 7. I have to say, actually, I do love the paint on this bike. Uh, this is actually the silver bike, of course, and it looks really good. Uh, however, regarding the frame, as you can see, the top tube up here is straight. It does not have a little dip to it. And as you look on the Rad Rover, you'll see that this actually has a dip into it. And the reason why that's important is your standover height. Now, my girlfriend is five foot four. She cannot touch the ground on the Saunders because it does not have that dip, but she can actually touch the ground with the Rad Rover because of that dip. So that is a main thing that we look for now um, because obviously if she can't stand over the bike, it's really hard for her to ride the bike. But overall, the actual frame of the Saunders, I don't really have any complaints. If you look at it here, I mean, it's, the welds are really good. Uh, the paint job is really nice. I mean, at least in this specific color, maybe because it hides more, who knows, but um, I'm definitely a fan of the silver. And they do have some funky colors with the Saunders bikes, but another nice thing is they actually put these plugs. Uh, so if you don't have a rack on your bike, uh, they plug up those holes. That is a nice feature. And of course, looking at the Rad Rover frame, same thing, high quality welds. Now this frame is aluminum. The Saunders 7 that I'm comparing this to is also aluminum. However, Saunders offers steel frames as well, so you need to make sure you check that out. But the main thing about this bike that I really like about the frame is that it's got that little dip in there for your standover height. So if you're shorter than five foot eight, five foot six, that's something that's gonna be a really big deal for you. But overall, the frame, actually on both bikes, you really can't go wrong with just the frame themselves. They're both high quality frames. Next up, the most important thing, power. Now I was disappointed with the performance of this bike. However, this particular bike I ordered has a 350 watt hub motor. Saunders does offer a 500 watt hub motor, which is still, I consider to be underpowered, at least compared to the Rad Rover. This one features a 750 watt hub motor, which is a big difference. And actually, if you watch this video, I'm on the Saunders 7, my girlfriend's on the Rad Rover, I tell her to gun it, and she is gone. Yeah, that's a big difference. So next up, components. So I was really disappointed because I paid $100 for this so-called upgrade of suspension forks. There's no lockouts, there's no adjustments, it's just basically a cushy front fork. And the other thing that really just irritated me was if you look at this front plate right up here, this front plate's actually just welded on. And I was able to look in there a little bit and actually see some rust because I took this to the beach and there's rust in there, which makes sense because they can't get paint in there. But either way, I was very disappointed with the so-called upgraded option of the suspension forks on the Saunders. There's no adjustability, you can't lock it out. It's just crap. Now looking at the Rad Rover, this is actually all standard. You can lock these forks out, you can adjust them. The front bracket here, it's all one piece. 
I mean, this is obviously a much higher quality fork that's standard on the bike. Now, I lock my forks out quite often, and that's definitely a nice feature to have. And then also the ability to actually adjust them is also a nice perk. So if I'm gonna pay $100 for an upgrade on the Saunders bike, I'd really want forks like this. So let's talk about the back end of the bike here on this frame rail. Now, in this particular case on the Saunders 7, this actually has some nice brackets in there that actually hold the cabling in place. But you notice that there's no chain guard. So when you get some chain slap in here, this chain has a lot of movement into it, which can nick up the bottom bar here on the frame. If you look at the Rad Rover here, this one actually uses zip ties to keep the wires in place. I wish they had some, some metal brackets like the Saunders does, but at least they have a cover on here. So if you get some chain slap, it's not gonna ruin the finish of your paint. So that's definitely a nice little added perk having this piece right here to protect against that kind of damage. So moving a little bit further up, let's talk about the pedals. On the Saunders 7, these feature aluminum pedals. They're definitely wide bodied, which is good because it's a fat tire bike. So it gives you a little bit bigger platform to put your feet on. Same thing with the Rad Rover, also aluminum, wide body, fantastic. No complaints on either bike as far as the pedals go. I do, however, have a complaint with the chain guard on the Saunders. This thing is plastic. Who puts plastic on their bike like that? That thing is just asking to get broken and it's very cheap. And who knows, after a little bit of uh, sun exposure, it might just get brittle. So we don't know, only time will tell. On the Rad Rover, they actually use a aluminum chain guard. Now my bike is a little bit older, but on the new models here, they actually offer an inside chain guard as well. But that's definitely a nice feature to have, uh, especially for an area like that. That's huge. So on the Saunders 7, they use a Shimano Tourney gear set. This is a seven speed. It's definitely on the lower end of quality. Uh, it's a little bit clunkier and the components are a little bit more plastic based. On the Rad Rover, they decided to step it up a little bit. They used the Shimano Asira trim. Um, this has a little bit more metal components to it. And between the two bikes, this one definitely shifts a little bit quieter. So onto the handlebars, plenty of room for accessories, uh, thinner of course. And when we look over here at the grips, uh, the grips are definitely cheaper. They're kind of nice because of the rubber, good grip on them, but just overall they feel cheap. This mirror is mine, don't worry about that. But the handlebar grips, they just feel really cheap to me. Um, anyways, moving over, we got the button, got the handlebars of course, and then we have the headset. Now the headset's a little bit of a funky design. It's all aluminum. Personally, not my, my kind of style, but at least, you know, it is a nice feature on the bike. And then you get to the thumb throttle. This thing is the biggest joke Saunders could have put on their bike. Look at this thing, it's just wiggling. It's so fucking cheap. Part of my language, but they really screwed up right there. Uh, furthermore, with the shifter on here, it's really hard to reach the thumb throttle because uh, you kind of have to like lean over just to get to it. Plus on top of that, once you get to the thumb throttle, it's just cheap. You kind of don't want to use it because you kind of feel like you're going to break it. And that's probably why they sell it as an additional part on their website in case you do break it. But anyways, moving on to the shifter here. The shifter is nice. Actually, I have no complaints with the shifter other than it's kind of awkward to get to it because of the grips. The grips have this little button right here for the adjusters and they kind of poke up on your palm when you grab it. Um, it is a nice shifter. It works smoothly. No complaints with the shifter at all. It's just that damn thumb throttle. So moving on over to the Rad Rover. First things first, the cell phone holder, the mirror, and the thumb throttle attachment. Uh, al along with the GoPro mount here, those are all add-on accessories. But going to the grips, I love these grips. Uh, they're pleather and they're definitely wide. They're definitely comfortable. They're just like the Saunders, but they're a little bit more beefed up and they have a little bit more grasp to them. And the nice thing I also like is the bell. Built into the bike, into the brake handlebars right here. So everything you need, very accessible here on the left side. Of course, you have your button control for your LCD screen. 
So moving to the right side here, you'll notice that the right grip is a little bit shorter because they actually have a twist throttle on this side. Now, I'm more of a fan of the thumb throttle, so I helped design this add-on accessory, uh, which is sold by a different company. But it makes it a lot easier, regardless if you have a twist throttle or the thumb throttle attachment, it's just a lot easier to operate the throttle when it's that much closer to your handlebars. And it's so seamless because it's so close. So when you're in those intersections, you need to romp on it to get up to speed quickly, easy access to the throttle because it's right there connected with the grip. Now moving on to the shifter, I have no complaints with this shifter. Push the button to go to a higher gear. It's easy to get to. If you want to move up a gear, you have the lever at the top here, also easy to get to. And with a twist throttle, it's easily accessible. So moving to the front of the handlebars here, as you can see, brand name, Zoom handlebars. And with the brakes here, I really like these brakes. And the reason why is because they have this little rubber piece on the front end of them. That makes it so much easier to grab them, especially in wet conditions. That is a really, really nice feature to have on the front brake levers. So definitely a nice added touch with that. Now a nice feature the Rad Rover has over the Saunders is a headlight. And that's really nice because you can actually run a headlight off the onboard battery pack. And you have the wire leads that come right off the LCD display and you control the entire headlight off of the LCD display panel. And it's all tied into the bike. Now this particular headlight on my Rad Rover is a prototype that we're building. But either way, it's standard equipment on the bike. And it's all tied into the factory wiring using your factory battery, easy peasy. On the Saunders, there's no wire leads. There's no way to hook up a aftermarket headlight. You could mount one. However, there is no wires and there's no way unless you do heavy modifications to add an external headlight to run off the bike. So let's talk brakes. Each bike weighs about 60 pounds, plus your cargo and your weight. That is a lot of weight to slow down. So the Rad Rover features a 180 millimeter disc brake, front and rear, of course. With the 180 millimeter disc brakes, you're going to get better control of your stopping and you're going to get more stopping power. And that's a pretty big deal when you're considering buying an e-bike because of the added weight of the bike. On the Saunders, they feature a 160 millimeter disc rotor, which is smaller. So you're not going to have as much control of your braking and you're not going to have as much stopping power. Now, don't get me wrong, both brakes work and they stop. You'll just have more control and more power with the Rad Rover's 180 millimeter brakes. So let's talk about bolt-on accessories uh, for bottle holders. Now I have a wall mount bottle opener. I'm unsure of the dimensions between the two bolts, but people have installed uh, bottle holders up here in this area. And there is um, bolt holes on each side of the Rad Rover's frame. So that's also really good to have in case you need to add bottle holders or maybe even a bread basket. There's also some bottle holders, uh, mounting plate down here at the bottom as well on the down tube. So that's, that's three points that you can mount a bottle holder or any other accessories you might come up with. Coming over here to the Saunders, unfortunately, there's no such options. There's, there's nothing up here to mount the bottle holder. Uh, if we take a look down here on the, on the bottom tube, you can see that there's nowhere else to install a bottle holder. Uh, so that's very unfortunate. So that's definitely something that you're going to lack on the Saunders. Uh, but you do have the handlebars. Now, there's definitely some space up here because they don't have much going on. However, you do need to realize that back here you have the brakes and those might interfere with any accessories that you might add on to the handlebars. So keep that in mind. Now I want to touch on kickstands for a quick second because this, you know, applies to me for my types of, of conditions that I ride my bikes in. As you can see here with the Saunders kickstand, this thing is like a stake in the ground. On top of that, it's just cheap metal up here at the top that's riveted in with a, with a spring. It does have a metal shaft, which is nice, a little bit more durable. But like I said, this thing is like a stake. This thing just digs into the ground. So if you're at the beach a lot, or you're somewhere where there's wet ground, that soft ground, 
this thing will just poke right into the ground. I mean, this thing went in a good two inches at least into the sand. And that's with no cargo on the bike. That's with no weight. It's just the weight of the bike itself. Now with the Rad Rover, this one has a little bit more of a beefier kickstand, especially with a wider footprint. You put this thing down, the wider footprint help keeps it above ground. And it's definitely stiffer at the top, metal frame construction. The foot peg here is adjustable and it is actually made out of plastic on the lower portion of it. But the nice thing is it's got this wide footprint that's not gonna dig into the ground. And for me, when I go to the beach, which is quite often, that is a huge deal. Now let's talk batteries. First, you, get a, you gotta get on your knees just to get access to the charge port because you gotta get down there low and you need to peel off this damn rubber cap just to get access to the charge port. That is a huge pain in the ass because you have to remove this, this silly little rubber cap just to get to the charge port to charge the damn bike. Or you have the option to open up the cover and get to the battery. Open up the cover, get, come on, we can do it. Oh geez, it's taking forever. All right, anyways, so we open up the cover, right? And then you have access to the battery. It's locked in there, which is nice. Nice safety feature, I guess. But then you also have to unscrew the barrel connector that connects to the controller. So you have to unscrew this damn thing just to get the battery out, and that's a huge pain in the ass as well. I'm not gonna do it, but it's still a huge pain in the ass. And of course, I don't have the battery turned on, so we'll have to go to the other side and turn it on. But before we do that, the other thing I really dislike is how cheap these connectors are. This is a super cheap barrel connector for the controller. Uh, not a fan. Anyway, let's close it up sometime today. Okay. And then if you want to turn the damn battery on, there's another cap. And you have to peel this cap off just to get access to the inside to turn the battery on or off. So how stupid is that? You gotta turn the battery on, you gotta turn the battery off, you gotta take this rubber cap off, you gotta take this rubber cap that you just dropped in the sand, and you gotta put it back on so you don't get any dirt or dust or water inside this damn triangle. It is a huge pain in the ass. My biggest complaint of the Saunders bike overall is the battery management. So on the Rad Rover, as you can see, the battery and the controller are exposed and they're mounted on the frame of the bike. And the controller is back here on the back end. It's weather sealed, ready to go, as are the connectors. And the battery itself is also weather sealed. It features a super easy, convenient on-off switch, lockable to the frame of the bike with a lock and key. And the battery pack also doubles as an external battery pack for your USB devices. So if you need to charge the battery or take the battery with you, it just easily comes right off the bike as long as you unlock it from the frame. And it goes just as easy right back onto the frame. It's a lot easier to manage this battery, especially if you need to take the battery off to charge it, because you don't need to mess with anything that is covering up the battery pack inside the frame here. It's very easy to get to. On the Saunders, they have that cover on there, which is kind of nice because it kind of blocks out the battery a little bit, but at the same time, it does get in the way, especially when you're pedaling. So next, let's go over the online ordering experience and what kind of information you can get from their website and the kind of confidence you can get from purchasing either bike. So when you land on the Saunders webpage, it's pretty easy to see, especially up here at the top where it says, now available for pre-sale. That's how all their sales go because Saunders actually really doesn't keep an inventory. You'll see a button here that says invest now. And the reason for that is because they want people to invest in their company and make them bigger. See, Saunders doesn't really carry an inventory. If they do, I highly suspect the reason for that inventory is from the order cancellations that they get. And they, they're forced to you know, buy those bikes anyways because they're already made and now they have to store them and hopefully they can unload them because people canceled their order. You can expect delivery in up to 90 to 120 days after you place your order. But let's go ahead and try to order a bike here and actually see what the cost is. So this one's actually the Saunders X because they no longer sell the Saunders 7. So we're gonna configure this one just like we configured mine that I did in this comparison video. So with the LCD screen and the seven speed shifter, 
along with the front suspension, you're up to $1,199. The difference between this bike and the bike that I ordered is this one features a 48 volt 11.17 amp hour battery and a 500 watt rear hub motor. So this is actually a little bit closer in comparison to the Rad Rover than the bike that I actually ordered with the Sonder 7. So another thing to notice is the description page for each product. Now this one, actually all of the products, um, they all have a lot of red font at the very top of the description. And we associate red with a warning or bad. So Saunders hopefully will fix this, but it doesn't build very much confidence right off the top when you're purchasing a bike that you have to wait up to three months for because all their bikes are made to order and they're made in China and then they ship from China on a boat. So it's not a very quick process. So the confidence is definitely not there, especially when you start reading the description page. But they do go over the frame and the battery and the motors and, and the other parts of the bike with a summarized detailed version of what you will be purchasing. So keep that in mind. So let's go back up here and continue on with our purchase of the bike. And we'll just add this to our cart. And as you can see, the total price is $1,199. Proceed to checkout. And oh, going back here, hang on a second. I forgot an important detail. Sometimes you actually might not get what you ordered. Here's a prime example from Scott. This is not the first time that this has happened, but he actually ordered two original fat tire bikes, one in silver and one in charcoal. However, the bikes that he received were silver and gold. So he contacted Saunders via chat and he got nowhere. Basically he was told to either wait three months for Saunders to build and ship a charcoal bike or keep the gold bike. What kind of shitty ass customer service is that to where you're told by the company that we need to build a bike for you, wait three months, don't ride the gold one. And another user had the same exact issue again. He ordered a charcoal bike and instead he was sent a red bike. Anyways, that aside, let's see how much it would cost to ship this bad boy to us. So we enter in our state or zip code and it comes out to being $154 to ship the bike. So this bike shipped is $1,353. That is a $146 difference from the Rad Rover. So when you land on the Rad Power Bikes website, you're instantly greeted with a lot of information and a very professional website. That also carries over to their product page. Instantly, you're greeted with a lot of information that helps build the confidence you need when you're considering purchasing one of their bikes. And they go over all the details, the general specs, obviously the features of the bike that sets them apart from their competition, all the way down to the technical specs of the individual parts that are used on the bike and the sizing of those parts. And also a general sizing of the bicycle itself um, in case you need to worry about how big of a bike rack you need or can you stand over it. So what sets them apart from their competition? They have a very similar business model, which is direct to consumer, but the difference is they're actually based out of Seattle, Washington. Their inventory is based out of Washington, which means in, when you place an order today for a bike, it's either gonna to ship today or ship tomorrow, and you'll have your product in less than a week. Now that's huge because do you wanna wait a week or do you wanna wait three months? Now, I don't have experience with the Saunders customer service, but if you go online and you research, you'll see that Saunders hands down has probably the worst customer service you can ever deal with. Don't take my word for it. Do your research, search online. I do have experience with Rad Power Bikes. Uh, their customer service, out of any product that I've ever owned, hands down the best customer service I've ever had to deal with. They definitely take care of you and that is huge. Facebook web forms who has the better online support community for each brand so hands down the best resource that you have for community support would be facebook groups now i had the privilege to join the saunders owners group and just so we're clear to my knowledge that owners group is actually owned by a regular person who just owns the product that group is not maintained or managed by Saunders, the company. 
regardless. I quickly learned that that group filters their content. They filter their content in a way to protect the brand and the image of Saunders. Needless to say, the admin of that group is an asshole. He's also a control freak and very argumentative. Just overall, he's just a really shitty person. And it's very unfortunate because that group has a lot of great members, but the management of that group really just takes it up a notch to make it a really, really poor place to get any information you need other than just going there for some internet high fives and to brag about the ride you did for the day. The Saunders owners group is probably hands down the worst group I've ever been a member of on Facebook. Don't take my word for that. You can go on that group and you can join, stay there for a week. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. When it comes to online support, I don't recommend the Saunders owners group on Facebook because like I said, it's poorly managed. The admin's an asshole and it's just filtered content to protect the image of the brand. So check it out. If you're really interested in a Saunders bike, like I said, I would check out the group see what you can find out and go from there. Uh, just so we're aware, there is another member that was supposedly a member of that Saunders owners group, got pissed off and went off and created a new owners group that's unfiltered. So if you do look up the two groups, the one that's in question here on this review video has a member base of over 6,000 members. Can't remember what the new one is, but um, definitely take that in consideration if this is something that is important to you. Now with the Rad Power Bike Owners Group, same thing, to my knowledge, this group is not maintained or managed by the company themselves. Rather, they're, the group is owned by a owner of the product. But this group has a much different vibe to it compared to the Saunders group. On this group, you'll find that content is not filtered. Your posts are not deleted if they're remotely negative about the brand overall. It's a definitely more positive experience on this group and people are a lot more friendlier on this group. There's a couple people on the Saunders group that harassed me for no reason just because I was there posting. You really don't see that too much on the Rad Power Bike Owners group. And like I said, it's a totally different vibe. So if you utilize Facebook groups as a resource for community support, I highly recommend you also join the Rad Power Bikes Owners group just to get a feel for what you're getting into. And you'll definitely notice a night and day difference. So if that's something that's important to you, definitely check it out. So the Saunders 7 that I tested, it's a decent, cheap bike. If you're gonna spend that kind of money on an electric bicycle, I highly recommend the Rad Rover as you get better build quality and more bang for your buck. If you have any questions or comments, please post up below. And hopefully I didn't start a flame war between the two brands. <laughs>